Hello, soon-to-be nurse practitioners. My name is Ms. Cohen, and I have prepared for you the Nurse Practitioner Board's Review Gastroenterology. So let's get started. We will be reviewing appendicitis, cholecystitis, diverticulitis, pancreatitis, and we have to talk about abdominal maneuvers. Yes, we do. We have to talk about Markle test, McBurney's point, obturator sign, psoas and iliopsoas, rebound tenderness, also known as Bloomberg sign, Robson sign, and the Murphy's maneuver or sign. Now, the good thing is that I'm gonna show you ways of remembering these so you don't get confused with like your joints signs, right? We're also gonna talk about GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, also known as IBS, peptic ulcer disease. The difference between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, these can be mixed up, but there's key clues that differ between both of them. And I'm gonna teach you those so you don't get them mixed up on the exam. We have to talk about colon cancer. And I know you know how to find colon cancer on a patient according to the symptoms, but did you know that there's a difference between ascending versus descending? In this, you have to know, and I'm gonna teach it to you. Solinger ellison syndrome, C. diff, and hepatitis. And even though I already have a free video available to you that talks about hepatitis, I came up with this new chart that is even simpler and easy to comprehend. And I'm gonna teach you how to interpret hepatitis, hepatitis serology, much easier. So let's get at it. So appendicitis, you have to, you have to understand appendicitis walking into the exam, especially with the signs and, and all the maneuvers. So what is appendicitis? As you can see here on the picture, right at the appendix, that, that little organ that we still don't clearly understand what's its function, but it sure can cause issues when it becomes inflamed. So it's an inflammation of the, the appendix. Symptoms anorexia, nausea, vomiting, low-grade fever, chills, right lower quadrant. So walking into the exam, if you have to draw this diagram here with your colon, right side versus left side, ascending versus descending, where the appendix, gallbladder, um, and all these landmarks are, it's gonna be very beneficial because in the test you may be very nervous and you may mix up your right from your left, and I kid you not, so do yourself a favor, make it super simple for you, draw yourself a midsection of a human being, like I have it here, and check where the pain is provoked or where it starts. So you know where, what organs are, lie underneath. So appendix, if you were to draw a big X right here, right, it will be on your right lower quadrant. Remember, it's like a mirror, right? when we talk about patient's anatomy. So right lower quadrant, you see how it's highlighted in green? That's for a reason. You have to really pay attention. Rebound tenderness, guarding, okay? Progressive periumbilical pain, that's where it starts by the umbilicus. Um, and usually it can radiate. It can radiate to the mid back, especially for acute appendicitis. But remember your McBurney's point is pretty much where the appendix is located, right? It's not by the umbilicus, it's not by the pelvis, it's right in between. And I have another diagram coming up that clearly shows you that, but that's McBurney's point is in regards to the appendix. So for example, okay, acute, acute appendicitis, severe mid-gastric pain that radiates to the mid-back, okay? Positive psoas, positive obturator, positive Rob sign, positive Bloomberg. When in doubt in the test, if it's positive, it's most likely appendicitis, except for a few that we'll go over. So what's the treatment? Appendectomy, antibiotics, depending on the severity. But an emergency is if the appendix ruptures, right? Its contents can leak into the peritoneum, causing really bad things. And usually it presents with acute guarding and bored like abdomen. Cholecystitis. So part of your diagram, when you draw it, 
should include the liver right underneath you draw your little gallbladder and your pancreas okay so when you draw your big x dividing the midsection you'll recognize that the gallbladder discomfort would originate at the right upper quadrant of the abdomen so let's talk about cholecystitis cholecystitis is an inflammation of the gallbladder is it if you ask me i would call it gallbladderitis but it's called cholecystitis so it can be due to stones that block the tube leading to uh, from gallbladder to the small intestine all right more information that you need to know but you should really pay attention to where the pain originates and that is severe pain in the right upper quadrant or epigastric area just because it's located close nearby and bloating nausea vomiting anorexia these people come to the emergency room screaming in pain. This is pretty, pretty bad pain. All right, just like when you have the kidney stones, they get stuck and it's so painful. Same kind of issue here. The stones get stuck on this duct right here, extremely painful. Usually symptoms occur after one hour or more of eating a fatty meal. Again, it's highlighted, not highlighted, but it's in green because that it's a clue nothing else that I can think of, of what we're going to go over right now, when we talk about abdominal, abdominal pain, happens after a fatty meal, okay? That is a giveaway, almost to the point that I don't care what the rest of the question says and what other clues they throw at you. If this person had a fatty meal and they developed right upper quadrant pain, guarantee is cholecystitis. So pain may radiate to the shoulder. Okay, whatever. Treatments, remove the organ, antibiotics. If you found this review helpful, I welcome you to come and check the remaining of the review at cohenreview.teachable.com. In this website, you'll find other reviews that I have uploaded covering many systems reviews in, with the purpose of helping you study uh, and pass your boards. In addition to the reviews, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're not sure if you're ready to take the exam or not, come and shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. I'll set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting where I get to assess your readiness to take the boards and I can give you some kind of study guide into what your weaknesses are and your strengths are, and we can talk in more detail so I can better guide you into studying for the nurse practitioner boards. So best of luck with your studies. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at shiracohen at gmail.com. Good luck.